Izzy, thank you. That was wonderful. Izzy Rivas was playing the prelude this morning. And what grade are you going into? Ninth, Ninth grade. That was excellent. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Stephen Sanders. I'm one of the pastors at Oak Hill. And this morning, I, along with Reverend Missy Jensen and our musicians, led by Louise Avant, we are leading in worship up front today. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, I extend to you a special welcome. And we have Pastor Ryan is online and one of our online hosts, and we encourage you to be interacting with them. If you are on Facebook, if you would just type in that you were here this morning, and that helps us be able to stay in contact with you. And if you have any joys or concerns, type those in, and we will be sharing those either with the, the whole congregation or with just the pastoral team. For those in the sanctuary, um, I am so glad you're here. If this is your first time with us at Oak Hill, I extend to you a special welcome, and I pray this time is a blessing for you. In your bulletin, there is a prayer and registration card. I ask that you, if you would take that out right now, and at the bottom of the card, there is a place for you to share any joys or concerns. You can either share them with the entire congregation or just mark it for the pastoral team, and we will hold that into pastoral confidence. And at the top of the card, there is a place for you to let us know that you are here today and share your name and contact information. That helps us stay in contact with you. And during our time of offering today, we'll invite you to, to place those into the offering basket um, as part of your offering to God, offering your prayers and your, and your presence as we gather for worship. Um, a couple of things. I, I have an apology this morning. We do not have our deaf interpreter today. Um, we were not able to arrange for that. And so for those of you who are worshiping online who are part of our deaf community, um, I apologize, and, and we will try to do better um, and get that arranged next week. Also, for, um, for grown-ups with kids, over on the far left near, near our organ, we have an area that we call our playground. It is a place for, for kids to be able to go and play quietly as part of worship. It's a place where our kids can be present in worship with their, with their grown-ups and with their families, but also be able to wiggle and move. And so uh, grown-ups, the kids are still your responsibility while they're, they're in that area. But as a church, they're also our responsibility. And, and one of our commitments as a church is to be welcoming to all of God's children. And so just be, be praying for the kids in the playground. And if there's a uh, a noisy toy over there that is bugging the, the snot out of you? Can I say that in church? Probably not. Um, you have permission to go over there and quietly remove that toy, okay? Um, it's, uh, but we've, we've tried to get just the, the, the non-noise ones in that area. I think those are the announcements that I have as we come this morning to worship. So I invite you, will you stand with me as you are able, and let us join as we call one another to worship and the words for our call to worship are on the screen to your right, or if you're online, they should be somewhere on the screen. And let us call one another into this time of worship. We gather to meet with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to seek God's face, and to bring, oh, sorry, to bring before God all our days and every part of our lives. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, draw near to us as we draw near to you. I invite you to remain standing as you are able, and will you join with our musicians and lift your voice in praise to God as we sing together, crown him with many crowns. The words are on the screen to your right and also in the hymnal on page 327. Let us lift our voices to God.
Men, I invite you to be seated. We're going to enter into a time of prayer, and as we do so, um, first of all, I invite you to take your bulletin and open that up. And inside, on, on one of the flaps, you will see a list of, of joys and concerns that people have shared with the congregation. And I, I invite you to, to read through this today, and also to take the bulletin home and to post the prayer concerns and joys in, in a place where you can see that throughout the week to be um, in prayer for those people and situations. And I, I lift one in, per, in particular to you. Carl Herzog, the husband of Kathy Herzog, he entered into hospice care yesterday. And so we in, ask that you be keeping Carl and Kathy in your prayers as he enters into this season of life, um, as, as, he, as, as he prepares to die. And so we ask that you keep them in your prayers and also be reaching out and be loving and caring for that family during this season. As we come in today, I'm going to invite us just to have a moment of lifting before God and one another joys or concerns that are upon our hearts. And then we're going to enter into a time of prayer. And I ask you if they're to, to be lifting joys or concerns out loud or typing them in to, to, the, to Facebooks and be sharing with other people. And when someone lifts something aloud, I ask, I'm going to res respond, Lord, in your mercy, and I ask that you continue and say, hear our prayer. So what joys or concerns do we have to lift this morning? Lord, in your mercy. For Carl, Lord, in your mercy. For Lois, Lord, in your mercy. For Helen, Lord, in your mercy. Pursue, Lord, in your mercy. For Gloria, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. For Jeannie, Lord, in your mercy. For Diane, Lord, in your mercy. Debbie, Lord, in your mercy. For Margaret, Lord, in your mercy. For Olivia, Lord, in your mercy. For Betty, Lord, in your mercy. Now take your feet and set them firmly on the ground or as close to it as you can get. And I invite you to take your hands and cup them in front of you, making a bowl. And as you're comfortable, close your eyes. And take a deep breath in and let it out. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Now imagine your hands as a bowl. And imagine placing the concerns upon your heart into that bowl, into the palm of your hands, for family and friends about whom you are worried, for situations in this world that break your heart. for your own life, for health, or worries that weigh upon you. Place those into that bowl, that palm, the palm of your hands. Now take a deep breath in and let it out. 
Take a deep breath in and let it out. Now lift your palms, that bowl in your hands toward heaven. And in your own heart, lift those concerns before God. Holy God, we lift these parts of our lives before you. There's some situations that we can take care of, and there's some that are beyond our power, O oh God. And we lift these before you this morning. Now leave those concerns in the presence of God and let your hands fall back down to your lap. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Now open up your palms again and make a cup with your hands. Now imagine God pouring into your hands what you need in life. Strength to make it through the next day. Forgiveness for mistakes you have made. Forgiveness for hurting people who are dear to you. Allow God to pour into the palm of your hands Compassion for people who irritate you. Joy for life. Hope that love prevails. Allow God to pour into the palm of your hands what you need to make it through this next week and live as God's child. Pull your hands close to your chest. Holy God, we give you thanks for these blessings you pour into our lives. We pray that you might strengthen us within our own hearts and souls that we might live boldly and faithfully as your people. We lift our prayers through Christ's most holy name. As we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There are different ways to pray. And sometimes just using our imagination and bringing our lives before God is a way of experiencing the holy. At this time, I invite kids in the congregation, kids of all ages, to come up for a time with Miss Jennifer. You can bring a grown-up with you if you would like and come and have a seat on the floor in front of her. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good. We were on the playground earlier, so I hope you guys cooled down. Yeah. So, can you can you see what I have in my hand? I have batteries in my hand. So, these batteries have the power to make this flashlight work. But are they doing any good just sitting here in my hand? No. I have to take the time to put them inside the flashlight, or else, look, no batteries, no flashlight. It doesn't work. 
But if I don't put the batteries in the flashlight, is it the battery's fault that the flashlight doesn't work? Or is it my fault? No, it's not the battery's fault. Pastor Stephen said that. It's my fault for not putting the batteries in the flashlight. So you guys know what this is, the Holy Bible. Did you also know that we, we call the Holy Bible God's Word? Because everything in it is from God, right? So God's Word, this Bible, is also like a battery. I know Abe's looking at me all funny. So if we don't take time to read the Bible and to believe in the things that we have read, it's not God's fault that we don't receive the blessings. Hmm. He says it in here. He tells us the things that we should do and the things that we need help with. Leighton, if you have a problem, if you're ever worried about something, you could go to the Bible and you could find scripture that would help you deal with that problem. But see, we have to use God's power. We have to use his battery in our lives. So the Bible's full of stories about the power of God's word. And we can read stories that help us when we're sick or scared or tired or sad, just about anything. But we have to put God's battery, his power, into our lives so that we can shine brightly and live as he wants us to live. Would you bow your heads and say a prayer with me? Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Thank you for giving us the Bible. Help us to fill our hearts with your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. You can go sit with your parents. One of the ministries we have at Oak Hill is a ministry called Stephen Ministry. And this morning, we're going to recognize and pray a blessing upon one of our new Stephen ministers at Oak Hill. So if all of our Stephen ministers would come up, if you're a Stephen minister, and come up and stand on the far right side over um, by the kneeler. And John Nelson is one of our Stephen ministers, and he's going to share with us a little bit about what Stephen ministry is about. John? Good morning. My name is John Nelson. I am one of the Stephen ministers uh, here at Oak Hill United Methodist Church. This uh, church has been a Stephen Ministry church since 1998. And for those who are not familiar with Stephen Ministry, I'm just going to provide a brief understanding of what Stephen Ministry is. Stephen Ministry offers a way to organize, uh, equip, and supervise a team of church members called Stephen Ministers to provide one-on-one -on -one Christ centered care to people in the church but also in the community who are experiencing life difficulties and we all know and Lord knows that there are many difficulties out there Stephen Ministers are church members who go through extensive training it's I think it's about 50 hours uh, focused especially on listening skills to offer care to people who are hurting. A Stephen minister typically has one care receiver at a time and meets with that person once a week for about an hour. Care receivers are individuals in the church or again in the community who are going through a crisis or life difficulty, and it might be the grief of losing a loved one, that might be broken relationships, it can be stress from joblessness or homelessness. There's a long list of items that could be difficult in one's life. 
the caring relationship does last for as long as the need persists. There is no prescribed timeline. Now, we have had many, many church members who have gone through the training since 1998. Uh, many have come and gone. And yet, one of the things that uh, I believe and I think we all believe is that once you're a Stephen minister, you are always a Stephen minister. And I will add that yes, we are trained to be in this very special relationship with a care receiver, but the training and experience that we receive is so beneficial for all of our relationships. I will say, uh, before I turn it back over to Pastor Stephen, we, we have this scripture, one phrase that, that guides us, and that's from Galatians 6 2. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We are very, very happy to have a, uh, a, a new Stephen minister join us in the church, and Pastor Stephen is going to take it from there. So today we're welcoming a new Stephen minister, Catherine Bailey, who is in gray. I'm not good with colors. Um, I, I'm not good with colors. Into the life of Oak Hill. Um, she has received her training elsewhere and has served as Stephen minister. But we thought this would be a good time to, to welcome her and to pray a blessing upon her. So my friends who are Stephen ministers, you have been equipped to serve as Stephen ministers in and through Oak Hill. The Spirit of Christ has given you the gifts for service. The training has prepared you to help others, and we ask that you now join in serving God, those in our congregation, and those in our larger neighborhood who need to be comforted. As Christ has responded to your needs, we ask you to strive to be responsive to the needs of others. As God patiently listens when you turn to God, we ask that you be a patient listener in a hurried world. As Jesus has shown his care to you, we ask you to help care for this congregation as a caring to, that we might live as a caring community through your own caring ministry. So you who are serving as Stephen ministers, I ask you on behalf of this whole congregation, are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others? to support, encourage, build up, and comfort other people in their needs. If you will, will you say yes with the help of God? Yes, yes with the help of God. You who are part of this community called Oak Hill, I ask you, as people who are part of this community called Oak Hill United Methodist Church, will you open your hearts to the ministry of these people and pray for them, that they may be effective servants of Christ, if you are willing to do that, will you, will you say yes with the help of God? Yes, sir. And will you also accept their ministry when you need help to allow these individuals to work with you as you face struggles in your life, that you might receive support and help from your Christian brothers and sisters? If you are willing to do that, I ask that you will say yes with the help of God. Catherine, because you have promised faithfully to serve Christ and Christ's people as a Stephen minister, I commend you to the care and guidance of the Holy Spirit as you in turn care for others. Work hard. All of y'all work hard and use the skills you have learned, realizing the gifts and talents the Spirit has given you so that you might be a blessing to the people you meet and for whom you care. I invite you to kneel. And Stephen Ministers, would you gather around her, please? And gently lay a hand upon her. And if you're not able to reach directly, just reach someone in front of her, extend a hand. And congregation, I invite you, as you are comfortable, to extend a hand toward Catherine. Holy God, we ask that you take our sister Catherine into your care. May she serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May she be quick to serve, patient to listen, 
and willing to share herself with your people. Keep her strong in the faith you have given her for the sake of Christ, who cares for all of us in every way forever. We lift our prayers through Christ's most holy name. And all God's people say, I present to you Catherine Bailey, one of the newest Stephen ministers at Oak Hill. Thank you. So if you know of someone who needs a listening presence, I invite you to visit with any of the Stephen ministers and they'll help you get you connected one with one. Stephen ministry is part of the ministry at Oak Hill. It is a way that we care for one another within this congregation. It is a way that we care for people in our community who are hurting. And your generosity, my friends, your generosity supports Stephen ministry. As you offer a portion of the financial blessings in your life to God, God uses those to love and care for others. Whether you place money in the offering baskets this morning or give online or give through texting, I want to let you know that, that your offering is very practical. Your offering helps support the financial needs to make ministry happen. But your generosity is also an act of faith. It is an act of saying, I want to join with God and care for this hurting world. You see, when you give of the financial resources in your life, you're offering a gift to God, but you are also caring for God's people and seeking to bless your life. I invite you for your generosity, and thank you for your generosity, my friends. God uses that to touch people's lives. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, we pray your blessings upon the gifts we offer to you. Those we place in baskets this morning, those that have already come out of our bank accounts, those that we plan to give, O oh God. We pray that you work in and through these gifts to be touching the lives of your children in this hurting world. We lift our prayers through Christ's most holy name, and all God's people say...
You may be seated, and Catherine Bailey is going to read our scripture this morning. Good morning. Would you bow your heads for the prayer for illumination? Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. May we carry them on our lips and in our hearts. Let the word of faith transform and animate our daily living. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. So, friends, we can now, without hesitation, walk right up to God into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. So let's do it, full of belief, confident that we are presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. This is the word of God. This morning we are returning to our summer series called Faith Animated and the movie Finding Nemo will be our guide today. So would you pray with me? God, we are grateful to be in your presence together. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to pour out on this place. May your spirit be in the words that I preach. May your spirit be within the ears of those who hear. And God, in our speaking and in our listening, may we be moved to action 
to be the community of faith that you have called us to be. Speak to us now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in the opening scene of Finding Nemo, we meet clownfish Marlin and his wife, Cora, and they are joyfully overlooking their eggs and dreaming of their soon-to-be future as a family. Suddenly, a hungry barracuda appears, and it attacks, killing the mother and all the eggs except one. And Marlin is forever changed. He becomes an overprotective father, timid to let that one surviving son he named Nemo out of his sight. And it really doesn't help that because of this attack, one of Nemo's fins is smaller than the other. So Marlin's helicopter parenting tendencies only exacerbate on Nemo's first day of school. And he ends up following the class on their field trip to the Great Barrier Reef because Marlin just knows that Nemo is not quite ready for that kind of activity. And Nemo is completely fed up with his dad. So he takes off into the deep ocean blue to prove that he is capable, at least more capable than his father gives him credit for. So let's see what happens. Our scene today picks up with Marlin lecturing the new teacher about taking Nemo so far away on his first day of school. Then the classmates gasp and shout that Nemo is swimming out to sea. So Marlin turns his lecturing over to Nemo and he starts yelling those parental threats of, you better not do that. Don't you put one fin on that boat. This is just gonna end where I'm gonna have to come and rescue you. But Nemo is swimming furiously. He is determined that he is gonna touch that boat. One fin touches it, and then he's right back on his way to his dad and classmates, proud that he actually accomplished it. And that's when emerges a scuba diver. And the scuba diver catches him in a net and Marlin is horrified. And another scuba diver closer to him comes up, takes his picture, and the flash from the camera disorients Marlin to where he can't see what is happening, which direction he needs to swim so that he can go and save Nemo. So now Marlin frantically is pursuing that boat to save Nemo, but he just can't keep up. So he begins to ask other fish around him if they have seen the boat and which direction it went. And this is when he meets a blue tang named Dory, who has seen the boat, and she starts leading him in the right direction. But unfortunately, she also suffers from short-term memory loss. <laughs> so she soon forgets who this clownfish is and why he's following her. So she darts here and there trying to lose him. And thus begins this unlikely friendship between the two as they face all kinds of obstacles together as they pursue finding Nemo. Now, meanwhile, we discover that Nemo's fish napper turns out to be a scuba diving dentist who thought when he came across this disoriented clownfish that, well, he needed a home. And Nemo would be the perfect birthday gift for his darling niece, Darla. So let's, happen, let's see what happens to Nemo when he's in the fish tank. Here in this scene, the dentist is showing Nemo a picture of his niece, Darla, his new mommy. And the fish within are terrified. They say she just wouldn't stop shaking the bag. Another cries out, she's a fish killer. 
just as the camera zooms in on that picture and we see that she is holding a bag with a dead fish in it. So of course Nemo is terrified and he just wants to go home so he backs up and all of a sudden he is sucked into a filtration tube in the tank and just his head is poking out and he's crying out for help. The other fish want to come and rescue him but just at that time an old gruff fish named Gil comes out from behind the plants and says nobody help him. But Nemo says I have a, a bad fin and Gil turns and we see a body that is scarred from injury, a fish fin that is damaged and he says never stopped me. So you see here Nemo is starting to believe all those protective warnings that his dad had lovingly given him. And Nemo starts to believe that he is limited in his capabilities. But just then, Gil comes out with his own scars to coach Nemo and to remind him to focus and that he is already equipped with the strength and the tenacity that he needs to escape from this own mess he created. And before he knows it, Nemo is out of the tube. He became determined to do this on his own all because somebody else believed in him. <laughs> and that made all the difference for Nemo. And if we're honest, like Nemo, we have voices within and without that try to convince us that we aren't capable of much. These voices stir up doubt and fear within us, and we become less willing to try new things. But listen to verse 22 again. It said, so let's do this, full of belief, confident that we are presentable inside and out. And it's here that we are reminded that we can boldly live in the world because of the work of Jesus. Our confidence isn't grounded in what we are able to do on our own. And if we open our eyes to look around us, we will notice that we are surrounded by wounded healers, like Gil the fish, like our beautiful Stephen ministers willing to serve. And they come alongside us to encourage us to not hold ourselves back, to not discount the gifts that are already within us. And as a baptized and forgiven people, we don't have to be held back by our own fears and doubts. Rather, we Got to just focus our energy on our mission. And we trust in the one who equips us. Now back in the ocean, the father, Marlin, is having his own hardships. And he too comes to a point where he feels like giving up. That it's not possible to reunite with his son, Nemo. But good old Dory comes up alongside him to encourage him. We see Marlin resting on the ledge of a rock and Dory comes up to him and says, Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills, do you know what we got to do when life gets you down? And then she starts singing, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. She takes him by the hand leads him down further into the ocean and won't let him quit. We all need a Dory in our lives, don't we? No matter how annoying they are. <laughs> because when all hope is lost, we need a friend to come by our side, to take us by the hand and remind us to keep going. Hebrews 10, 23 reads, 
Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. In other words, the author is reminding us, just keep swimming. God gives us a community of faith so that we can remind each other when those storms of chaos come rolling in that God will make good on God's promises. And we have to just hold fast while we wait. Now we're going back to the fish tank. And now that those fish know that Nemo can fit into that filtration tube, Gil devises an escape plan for all of them to get out of the tank and back into the ocean. He comes up with this plan for Nemo to block the filter. And when the tank becomes so filthy, the dentist will have to take them out to clean it. And once they're out, somehow they will find their way to the ocean because word on the street is that all drains lead there. But at execution time, Nemo is confident and he gets that pebble in place. He's ready to do his part. But before he is safely out of the tube, that little pebble dislodges. And Nemo's life is in danger as he is being sucked back in towards the fan blades. But his new friends rescue him just in the nick of time. And despite the adrenaline rush that they all felt, they also all feel disheartened. And they agree together that it is not worth the risk to try again. That is until Nigel, the pelican, flies into the open window in the dental office and delivers some shocking news to Nemo. The dentist opens the window in his office to let in some fresh air, and just then Nigel, the pelican, flies right up to the windowsill and starts talking to the fish in the tank. He asks where Nemo is. Nemo comes swimming right up and ask what he has to tell him and Nigel starts telling this outrageous story of how his father is on the way to rescue him how he's faced sharks and jellyfish and all kinds of obstacles but Nemo's in disbelief because his father wouldn't barely leave their home who could this be but then they figure out that his name is Marlin and all the facts match up, so Nemo gets excited hearing Nigel tell about this incredible adventurous journey that his dad is on just to rescue him. Nemo is now filled with confidence, is ready to do his part to get to his dad as well. You see, like Nemo and those other fish, we can all get to that place where we feel disheartened. When our attempts at reconciliation fail, when we watch the news and we see the next terrible thing that has happened, when we try to plan a family fun day and everybody's grumpy. I mean, why even try anymore? And the Hebrews are in the same boat. They were tired of trying to live out their Christian faith in a culture where it felt like they were swimming upstream. Their worship attendance declined, their fervor for being in mission dried up, and their sense of community tanked. Therefore, the author of Hebrews writes to them, to bolster up their faith and encourage them to persevere. And he delivers some good news that's similar to what Nigel was telling Nemo. He recaps all the work and obstacles that Christ has overcome. And we realize that God, our Father, is coming for us. God is coming to rescue us. 
Now, God is not some distant father saying, you'll be all right over there. Shake it off. You're okay. Rather, God is overcoming these insurmountable odds and will stop at nothing until we are reunited and brought home. There's nothing timid about our God. And like Nemo, we can renew our confidence and hope. And then we can spread that to others and encourage each other around us. Everybody, let's get back on track and do God's work in the world. Our text today ends with verse 25. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. See, simply put, we need each other. We need each other for accountability, for inspiration, and to enhance our memories of what God is capable of doing. We need each other's experiences so that we can learn who our God is and how our God works. And most of all, we need each other to remind each other of these things that are possible. And one of my favorite moments in Finding Nemo comes towards the end of the movie. Marlon and Dory have made it all the way to the dentist's office by climbing into Nigel's mouth. It's a big risk to take. And when they get up there, they see Nemo, who appears to be dead. <laughs> Although they don't know that this was Nemo acting out his own escape plan this time. He is playing dead so that he can get out of the fish tank and down into that drain of the toilet (laughs) that will eventually lead to the ocean. But they're unaware of that, so they think that Nemo is really dead. Marlon and Dory return to Sydney Harbor completely defeated and devastated but they have a beautiful conversation with one another let's listen so back in the ocean marlin starts to swim away but dory asks where he's going what what is he doing and he explains he's ready to just go home he thanks her for being a good friend on this journey with him but it's time for him to be alone and face his new future. But Dory, Dory's not ready for things to go that way. So as he is swimming away, she exclaims after him, no, no, you can't, stop. Please don't go away, please. No one's ever stuck with me for so long before. And if you leave, if you leave, I, I just remember things better with you. I do. Look, P. Sherman, 42, 42. I remember it. I do. It's there. I know it is. Because when I look at you, I can feel it. And, and when I look at you, I'm, I'm home. So please. I don't want that to go away. I don't want to forget. Friends, we need each other because we need each other to remember better. When we gather together for worship as a community, We gather together to pray and to sing, to study and to listen, all so that we can be shaped by the word of God. And when we gather in community, we can take the opportunity to admit to each other when we are full of doubt and fear, 
We can confess to each other when we are ready to throw in the towel and give it up. And along the way, we can remind each other that God has not given up on us yet. And as such, you and I cannot give up either. So to keep going, we gather together around this table and we break bread. We touch the waters of our baptisms. And these acts remind us who we are and whose we are. So today I pray that you will receive the grace that God is offering you. For it is sufficient for whatever journey you are on. It will get you home. And God's grace enables us to just keep swimming. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to our closing hymn, I want to invite you to continue reflecting on what God is calling you to do, how to respond to being a part of a faith community. How will you encourage one another? And if one of those ways is you've decided you need to join yourself to this congregation, to this community of faith, we encourage you to come forward and talk to Stephen or myself. You can find us in the lobby after the service or during this hymn. But let's stand together and sing together, O Church of God United. Nemo and the writer of Hebrews remind us to just keep swimming. Keep putting one foot in front of the other, one fin in front of the other day by day. And as we do, as we keep seeking to remain faithful, gathering with the community of faith, God empowers us and strengthens us that we can live as God's people. As I send you out, I let you know about two things going on in the life of the church, actually two and a half, um, is teenagers. Pastor Ryan and youth ministry is you're going to blazer tag this afternoon. So he's going to be, the odds are going to be that he's going to be in the lobby 
the narthex area, what we call the narthex, and not outside, because I know he does not like the heat. So if you have not connect, uh, visited with Pastor Ryan already, he's going to be in the lobby, what we call the narthex. Go visit with him and go and have fun. Next week, we are um, wrapping up our summer worship series with movies, and the movie is going to be Inside Out. Um, it is a deeply spiritual movie, um, and it's fun, too. Uh, we're going to be showing that in the children's building on Saturday. If you don't get to go to that, I encourage you to rent that and watch that at home. And then finally, out in the north, what we call the narthex, that lobby area outside, there are a boatload of backpacks. And if you go to the fellowship hall, there are more backpacks, and there are tons of school supplies. Drop by on your way out today, whether in the narthex or in the fellowship hall, and just lay a hand and pray Pray for the kid who's going to be receiving that backpack and school supplies. I think this church brought in like 50 jillion backpacks and three quadrillion pins and stuff. It is so cool. When we're faithful, God uses it to touch the lives of others. My friends, we live in a world where Christians are swimming against the stream. We are called to live as a people of love and justice and mercy and compassion and hope and forgiveness, and that just doesn't fit in our culture sometimes. But God will use it to change the world. Go in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen.